Kia ora, St Paul's Fano, and thanks so much for joining us tonight for midweek prayer. That's what we're calling it now, by the way. Not evening prayer, midweek prayer, just to get that right. Uh, I'm Matt, I'm one of the leaders here at St Paul's Church, and I'm married to Rach. Um, we hope you are enjoying the freedoms of uh, level one again, and summer has made a bit of a comeback, even though it's autumn, but it's great. We're loving that. Yeah, we like March. Hey, we felt it would be um, yeah really good just to kind of offer some space, just to kind of pause and to pray and reflect just in the middle of our weeks um, with God amongst all the kind of stuff that's going on and the busyness uh, in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, and I think as we do that too, it kind of gives us a bit of a chance really to kind of hand over or just bring whatever we want to to God um, tonight or simply just kind of like slow down before we try and sleep. I could probably sleep without doing anything else right now, though. Okay, you sleep. <laughs> I'm ready to sleep. You sleep now. Anyway, the prayers that we use will follow a rhythm and a structure. Um, as usual when we do this, so they'll come up on the screen and uh, you can pray. Obviously, any of it, because we can't see what you're doing. But if you want to do it kind of with the structure that we've got, you can pray the bits in bold, out loud with us or in the silence of your hearts. So as we begin, you might like to light a candle to remind you of... The light of Christ, which is never overcome by the darkness. Etefano, may the light of Christ be with you. And also with you. So let's pray together this prayer of surrender by Richard Foster. Today, O oh Lord, I yield myself to you. May your will be my delight today. May you have perfect sway in me. May your love be the pattern of my living. I surrender to you my hopes, my dreams, my ambitions. Do with them what you will, when you will, as you will. I place into your loving care my family, my friends, my future. Care for them with a care that I can never give. I release into your hands my need to control, my craving for status, my fear of obscurity. Eradicate the evil, purify the good, and establish your kingdom on earth, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Uh, let's just take a moment now to bring to mind or um, to speak out those things that might be burdening our lives or anything today that's kind of caused disconnection with God or with ourself or with others. So let's just do that now in a short time of silence. Uh, let's remember our need for God's healing and for God's forgiveness in our lives each day. For accepting life, yet living it without you, forgive us, Lord. For living without concern for others, forgive us, Lord. For tolerating oppression and injustice, forgive us, Lord. For turning the world to our own purposes and desires, forgive us, Lord. For refusing to love and forgive others, forgive us, Lord. Uh, for all these things, we humbly claim your grace again tonight, and we ask that you would continue to make us whole. Amen. Amen. We have a reading from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 from the Message Version. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the centre of your life. Thanks, Rach. Here yeah, just to kind of offer a, a thought. Couple. Couple. Uh, yeah, kind of thinking about how that um, verse or two kind of 
relates to me. Yeah, I think the thing that jumped out is it, it made me realize how much of an anxious person I can be at times. I worry about quite a lot of things actually, when I think about it, when I stop. I, I worry about my work, I worry about my kids, I worry about ministry stuff, I worry about others' perceptions of me at times. Am I good enough? Is my life sustainable? Is so much on? How will I get everything done? There's a bit of a list. Very much. How will I get everything done is on my list of yeah. worries too. So I guess the question uh, for me in relation to our verse tonight or verses tonight is kind of like what helps give me a true perspective in the midst of all that or what would help mm. kind of reduce or shift some of those anxieties that are going to be there um, regardless and probably um, for the rest of my life at times. What What is the thing... What are those things that kind of help settle me down as it said in that passage? And I think what really struck me is like doing more of what we're doing actually right now, tonight, uh, which is, is an antidote to anxiety in a sense by creating some pockets where we can be silent or still or slow down and pause and reflect with God uh, and with ourselves. That's actually really kind of countercultural in lots of ways. And when I slow down, even though I find it really hard to do that, I do actually realize again that what I'm carrying around with me in my head or in my heart and my feelings and emotions helps me kind of work out what all that is. But it also allows me the kind of space to uh, to realize that I actually don't need to carry it uh, by myself. I can give that over to God. So I guess in a nutshell, like prayer and silence um, or and stillness, can help us to kind of recalibrate our scattered senses or lives in God's presence. And then I think which in turn kind of starts to produce that inner peace that this passage is talking about, even if what's going on inside or outside of me or you uh, isn't that peaceful. Mm. Yeah, it's funny when you said that we, we might use that little passage to reflect on this evening, there were a couple of things that kind of came into my mind. And what you said is good, but it's funny because I'm wired in a way that as soon as someone says, don't do this, which one of the other translations of that verse is, do not be anxious about anything. Mm. And as soon as I hear that, I'm like, well, I'm going to be anxious. You know, like it's just, <laughs> don't you tell um, me what to do. Don't you tell me what to do. <laughs> I'll be anxious if I want to be anxious. Um, but I think reflecting on it, and I like the message translation because it has just a bit of a fresh take on it, mm. is that... When we're, when we're talking about not being anxious, it's not talking about mind over matter or kind of white knuckling through not being anxious that we just kind of have to force ourselves not to be anxious somehow, but that it's actually all that other stuff afterwards of being able to bring even the smallest of our concerns to God, being able to sit with our loving parent who has us and who we can mm. trust and who we can talk about stuff with or not talk about anything with and just be still with. That stuff ends up creating a situation where we don't need to be anxious. It's something that we get to kind of live into. But that's slightly a more helpful way around for me. That's what I was thinking about with it. And yeah, I'm just really trying at the moment to not worry about the outcome of prayer or the outcome of spending time with God, of creating this sort of zen, totally peaceful feeling, but actually just of trying to have the practice of stopping and the practice mm. of that that stuff that you were talking about, that stillness, that solitude, and, and not kind of trying to make the not anxious part happen, but just trying to create a space within which I can sit and be with God and probably have random thoughts going through my head half the time and not stress about that, you know? Mm. And that maybe as a byproduct of that, the things that I am anxious about will start to dial down and I will know that God, that big wholeness of God in my life, yeah. I think that's the hope and I think that's what a lot of Christians who have gone before us would attest to, that that's what does start to happen more and more mm. when we cultivate these kind of ways of, new ways of being in the world, eh? Mm. I'm just not all that patient about it, though. I want to be not anxious immediately. God, I sat down with you for two minutes. Why am I not anxious? <laughs> so I guess one way um, you could respond tonight is maybe just take a minute mm. uh, and just think about, you know, what are the concerns that's 
in your life right now and then just let God know about those concerns mm -hmm. and then wait and invite God's response to those concerns. Let's pray to close tonight. God of peace, as we head into the rest of our weeks, would you calm our hearts and our minds and our emotions? Would you fill us afresh with your spirit of rest and reassurance? And would you help us to choose faith over fear and trust over control? Keep us thankful and hopeful and useful. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So thanks for joining us tonight or whenever you've joined us. Hopefully it's been a helpful time of prayer, create a bit of space for yourselves. Hopefully you will be able to find some practical ways to reduce anxiety or worry in your life this week and to mm. create some spaces and pockets where you can just be. So we're going to be offering this, um, what's it called again? It's called Midweek Prayer. Midweek Prayer. <laughs> it's happening sometime in an evening, so I get a bit confused. We're going to be offering Midweek Prayer every week for the next few months on a Wednesday night. So please just join us at the same time, Wednesday nights, 9pm, uh, for Midweek Prayer. You got it. Got it right that you time. Sma you smashed that. <laughs> Finally. So, ka kite anō, pō marie. Take care. Take care. Hallelujah, our God.